Welcome back from the break. It's this morning here on Metro TV. My name is Desmond Okrikuda, as you can call me, Desifedi, the star boy, here with Nana Yatona Watch. And our guest is uh, Kwame Osudan. So he is with Trasaku. And uh, we're talking Ghana's house in the facet, uh, a bit of that. And then we had some other thing that his outfit is also working on. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Desi. How are you? I'm good. Good to see first you. Time, first time on your show. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, likewise. Good to see yeah. you too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, I wanted you to do the interview by this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. So figures from the Ghana Statistical Service indicate that a deficit of 1.7 million housing units, which is projected to hit about 2 million even before 2020. And this was even a couple of years back. Right. Looking, and then this was in 2000. Yes. Yeah. And, and moving on into about 20 years now from this, do you think we've been able to do that, to, to bridge that? Uh, well, I think the gap is widening. Mm. Um, of course, the importance of housing and everything cannot be overstated. Uh, and as a growing population, uh, I think that we lacked the ability at the time and now mm. to read in between the lines and to expand you know, that particular space. And so if you realize we are over 30 million, like now I think we are 33 million, mm -hmm. and yet somehow people are still struggling you know, to find spaces to, to, to rent, to get houses, uh, to live in, and to, to, to buy properties and things like that. So, um, I think that we've failed to properly plan, you know, as a nation to cater to these demands um, along the line. Mm -hmm. And that has largely accounted to, uh, it's accountable for, for instance, uh, the issues that we're having relative to housing deficit yeah. and all of those things. So it's, it's, it's lack of planning. We've not been able to manage the situation well. Hopefully, we may, with the support of private sector, you know, do the needful so that going into the future, we'll be able to uh, address all of these uh, teething challenges. Now, in 2020, the shortage was 5.7 million. How do you think the government has done enough partnering with the private sector to be able to solve this issue? Well, I think I should speak freely, right? Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> government has tried. Mm. Um, you know that uh, I think President Kufo started some housing projects. Mm. Um, uh, former well, president, late president uh, Atami also continued with another project cont uh, which was continued by uh, uh, former president John uh, Dramani Mahama. Mm. Um, and so it, it, one can safely assume that government has tried, you know, to, to do something about the, the, the housing challenges that we have. Uh, but whether or not that has yielded some positive results is a matter that we must interrogate. I want to believe that even the houses that we built are not affordable enough for the ordinary uh, young person in this country. Mm. So, for instance, if you graduated from the university, to start with, you don't even have a job. Yeah. You know? And these houses that are being built, these so-called affordable houses which have been built, are not affordable to you and I. Mm -hmm. And so you realize that you have to work for a certain period before you'll be able to uh, generate some money, which money you now have to try yeah. to, to, to buy those, those, um, those buildings. I believe that there must be a deliberate, intentional effort by government to expand that space so that we'll have a lot more uh, houses being built in order that all of us can, can benefit from it. Because look, let's face it, we're having serious rental issues in this country. Yeah. Um, people build their homes. And, and, and then the, the most shocking aspect of this is you, you have a house that is about 20 years old. And you know, how much they charge by way of rent yeah. is, is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, so you pay, maybe for a single room self-contained, you pay about between, in my area, for instance, pay between 500 to 600. Where's your area? <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't mention. <laughs> my name is after me. <laughs> you know, so, so, so it tells you how, how um, we've, we've not been able to sort of look at that particular space mm. so that we can learn some lessons from there and use that to, to, to develop the, the housing space. So yeah, clearly, I mean, government has tried, but I believe that we, we must have a lot more collaborative eff, uh, you know, efforts so that um, together with private sector, we may, we may you know, do, do a lot more in that space. Okay. Uh, no, 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 come on. Can you mentioned um, Kufo they started and um, I tell me also later Samuel said something then a German Mahama and then it continued. Can't it be a, na a national policy so that no one can tap into? Because when it comes to housing, it's a very dire yes, situation. Precisely, and that's actually a very brilliant point. Um, thing is, 
it's about policy direction. Mm. And I've con consistently, without fail, made this point that it appears that we are just, um, you know when you are descending from a cliff with a bicycle that has no brakes? <laughs> See how it works. That's so, a free fall. Yeah, it's a free fall. <laughs> so that we are not deliberate about setting things in this okay. country, which is yeah. why we are, we are so struggling. And over the period, the country is expanding, yeah. but we don't have attending um, infrastructure mm. to meet the growing demands of the people. And that always has been the problem. Now, if you look at, do we even have a national development plan? Mm -mm. On paper, we do. We, we do. On so, paper, yeah, yeah on paper but we do. physically. But, yes, absolutely. And so we've run the nation on the basis of party manifesto. You cannot do that because we have differences in ideology. So for instance, if the NDC came to power, they have a social oriented sort of manifesto that yeah. they yes. want to run with. Yeah. MPP has a capital, capital oriented yeah. policy that they yeah. want to. And so if we don't find a meeting ground, it will be practically impossible, impossible to see the way forward. And which is why oftentimes you realize that government comes and focuses on specific areas. Yeah. Because they believe that that is where they will derive, mm. you know, that kind of uh, social, or if you will, political capital from. Mm. Um, and so that has largely affected how we are, how we should be we able should be, be solving yeah. that, exactly, that to, to deal with all these matters. But clearly, that's a very brilliant uh, point. And I believe that we must focus our lenses on that mm -hmm. and ensure that there is some concerted agreement, mm -hmm. you know, between all stakeholders in order that we'll be able to ameliorate this challenge. Because yeah. look, whether we like it or not, we're building this country for, for posterity. Yeah. And if we fail in our attempt to do the right thing, posterity now. will suffer now. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I keep saying that we say that we are building uh, the country for the next generation, for the future. <laughs> but the question then becomes, who is the future? Who's what the is the future? Yeah. Yeah. What are you leaving behind such that um, people in the next 20, 40, 50 years will be able to, be able to, able to benefit them. from the system? And housing clearly is one aspect of it. I mean, Gaddafi, mm -hmm. for instance, was deliberate and intentional about housing. Yeah. If you went to Libya at the time, um, you know, and per the readings and all of those things that we've done, every young person who got married was given some <laughs> cash and some house, some accommodation at least. At the very least, if you are from university, you can get some... You can get you know, something for yourself. Because it ensures security. It, it psychologically defines your actions mm. and it makes you emotionally stable okay. so that you'll be able to focus on contributing your significant best to the development to the of country. Ghana. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that has been... Um, that has troubled this... I think we're talking about is land litigation. Ah. And I, I know that your, your outfit also <laughs> suffered that. Uh, yes. Is in on that. Yes. Yes. And emphasis mine. Land litigation in this country is a worrying development. Mm. And if we want to solve the housing deficit, we must be, uh, we must try to address these challenges, particularly when um, you know, about 60 to 70 percent of the land that we have in this country belongs to either family, chiefs, and things, things like that. And so um, private developers always struggle, you know, in, for instance, owning lands and using those lands for the purposes of development. And everybody, this is a no-brainer. Everybody knows this, that you can buy your, your land multiple times because somebody has gone to sell it to another, yeah, person, to another person, another person has gone to sell it. Currently, we are struggling with such a situation where we had, for instance, title to, 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 to the land. Mm. Somebody takes another person, so for instance, you and your beautiful uh, lady here, you go to court, I own the land. Both of you go to court, you go and argue at court says, you own the land. But I was not informed, I was not pre-informed about that action. Mm. Now court rules in your favor, the next moment, I'm on the land actually, the next moment you bring uh, security, police and everything, you start destroying right. my structures. I go to court, court says no. The ruling by the High Court was done in error. So the, you, my, I must be reinstated. However, I've not been reinstated. And when I try to go on the land, so, uh, facts are sent after mm. me. Uh, 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 how do they call them? Land guards land are sent guards, after yeah. me. So I'm even unable to utilize, you know, to the best of my ability, mm. what I'm supposed to do in order that I can, I can develop the land. So that's, that's, that's where we are. And that, those are the challenges which confronts all of us. Okay. And we are all um, part of that, of that struggle. Mm. Okay, so uh, is this sorted now? No, well, legally, yes. Okay. <laughs> legally, yes, but you know, there, there, are, there, are, there are differences in, 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 the, in the fight. Okay. So legally, yes, you can win in court. Um, Supreme Court has actually indicated that the ruling which was given in 2019 by the High Court was done in error. 
Um, in, indeed, they described it as nebulous. <laughs> nebulous. Yeah, nebulous. That, uh, and then, nebulous. <laughs> yeah, nebulous. That we Yeah, and nebulous, and that we must be reinstated. reinstated. Uh, we have sent a couple of letters to, okay. to the people who have lived there, who are living there, but their fear is that we may come to demolish their, their, their property. So they are also scared and things like that. I just want to state here and now that there's no such intention. Okay. Um, for, at least for those who have built their homes to a certain level. Mm -hmm. There's no such in intention to destroy it. However, those who are intending to, True. when you start, will destroy, will destroy it. it. <laughs> Anyways, it, it's been an interesting conversation and uh, how time flies. That's you've grown. <laughs> you've grown. Good job. Thank, Congrats. Thank, thank, thank you so much. So, we are wrapping up on the, on the conversation and the show, actually. I'm Kwame Osudan, spokesperson with Trasaco. <laughs>